Specialists in France have finally extracted the data from the badly damaged flight recorder of Aeroflot Nord A21. Okay, now we can see what the plane was doing. Let's pull up the parameters. Up to now, the investigators only know what the controller told them about A21's path leading up to the crash. The recorded flight data will tell them much more. They focus in on the engine thrust parameters. The first few hours of data provide few clues as to the cause of the crash. It looks like the auto throttle is on. The auto throttle controls the engine's power setting automatically, instead of the pilot controlling it manually. It's staggering the thrust levers and matching the engines. Okay. Bring out the last three minutes of the flight. Isolate this section. It's like all hell broke loose. The pitch and roll data paint a harrowing picture. That's a barrel roll. No one stood a chance. The investigation team continues to study the flight data to better understand what happened on board Aeroflot Nord Flight 821. They have learned the first hour and a half of the flight was uneventful. But when 821 starts the approach, things go terribly wrong. Okay, let's break this down. The plane comes down to 6,800 feet. Everything seems fine. Until this. The right engine is operating at 61%, but the left is near 40. As the plane banks steeply to the right, the auto throttle can't handle such a large split in engine power. So it disengages. Now the first officer has to manage the massive stagger in the thrust levers himself the thing he couldn't do in training. It required a lot more flying skill. You had to compensate for the, uh, the fact that the engine power was mismatched, or you had to very carefully move the throttles in a way that kept the power balanced. And the crew wasn't very good at doing either one of those things. What investigators discover next is even more puzzling. The first officer now disengages the autopilot. As the first officer begins the final bright turn towards the runway, he performs a series of actions that disengage the autopilot. He turns the yoke right, pushes it forward, and engages the stabilizer trim in sequence. Just like hitting the brakes when you're in cruise control. This signals to the autopilot that the pilot wants to take manual control, even if he doesn't. In most instances, an autopilot is somewhat uh, difficult to disengage. But this man managed to do that by, by accidentally trimming when he should not have. The mismatched engines are now forcing the plane to bank left and climb when it should be turning right and descending. Take a look at that. No one has an input for 20, 25 seconds. Investigators are astounded to discover that even though the autopilot is now off, neither pilot makes any changes to throttle, to pitch or roll for a full 25 seconds. What is this? No one flying the plane? If a pilot isn't aware that the autopilot is off, then he can get himself into a lot of trouble by by not noticing airspeed changes, by not noticing subtle uh, turns, by not keeping track of his altitude. The team now knows more of the technical details that contributed to Flight 821's crash. But why things spiraled out of control in the cockpit is still unknown.